Hi guys, welcome back to Wilda Beard Reviews. Tonight we're talking about X-Men issue 10, written by Jonathan Hickman, with art by Lionel Francis Yu. And this issue is a tie-in to Empire, the big event going on in X or in Marvel Comics right now. So this is, you know, a classic example of an issue or a tie-in to an event that threatens to just be kind of a wah-wah of an issue because a lot of people out there like me are not reading Empire, so you kind of see, oh, this is an Empire tie-in. I'm not reading Empire, am I going to get what's going on, do I need to read Empire to understand this? And then from the people that are reading Empire, do you just like, oh, I'm not reading X-Men, do I have to get X-Men because it's an Empire tie-in? Oh god, is it worth it, is it not worth it? And you know, after I've read this, I've actually read, read through it twice, I will say that I think this issue does a really good job of balancing both being an X-Men issue and being a tie-in to Empire. I will say again that I'm not reading Empire, so I don't know how big the implications of this issue are. Um, are to the greater uh, Empire story at large, but I feel like it did a really good job of playing both sides and being a balance between being an X-Men issue and being a tie to the greater Empire storyline. Uh, not only that, it's got great stuff for um, a character I don't know too much about in Vulcan, and it makes me want to go read um, some older stories like War of Kings and uh, more specifically X-Men Deadly Genesis. So, it's a good comic. I mean, there you go. Let's go. So let's go ahead and uh, and dive into this guy. And we can start going through it and and poke out and uh, point out all the different things um, that are going on in here. So right now uh, we open it up here with um, Vulcan or Gabriel Summers in the fault. Um, and so this is when kind of where he left off at the end of War of Kings. Like I said, I have not read War of Kings. I did a little bit of Wikipedia research before I started filming. And so um, spoilers for. War of Kings, um, at the end of that series, or at the end of that storyline, um, Vulcan and Black Bolt were fighting in this T-bomb went off, ripped a hole in the, in the fabric of space and time, and Black Bolt and, um, Vulcan fell into it, and he was just kind of floating around in there for a little bit. But now this is where we get a little bit more interesting. Something found him floating around in the fault, and it says here, um, gently the celestial avatar escaped. Uh, that king to uh, is lost to us. So let's be um, more. Let's uh, so let's take a bit more care with this one. So to me, that means that they had they were they had seen both Black Bolt and Vulcan there. Black Bolt had gotten out of the fault but Vulcan was still there and they're like oh don't screw this one up it's our only chance we got to do something um with this one there god just look at this art here from you right there god it's just amazing and they say uh these two kings and their empires waged a war that tore a hole that opened a door between this place and that now that's interesting that the fault wasn't just a rip in the fabric of space and time but it was now a portal to somewhere else presumably wherever these guys here came from they say, I wonder, what's a king worth there? Let's see, shall we? Oh, look at that. And they, like, do something weird with here. here like, they pull him open, look at the fire um, deep down inside him. They say he has fire within him, true power inside a broken and twisted host. Yes, but how broken and how twisted. And again, just look at that art from, from uh, Lionel Francis Yu right there. So, so good. So, one, that makes me want to read War of Kings because I've, I've heard a lot of good stuff about it. And it's just the cosmic corner of the Marvel Universe is a, is a place that I haven't really ever pushed into. That's most of my uh, Marvel comic stuff has been um, X-Men base so it's oh, i kind of want to read into that area a little bit all right so then we go here to the now where um um vulcan wakes up and he's like almost looks like he wakes up with a hangover and i did read that he likes to drink a lot but that kind of plays into maybe some of the differences in his personalities um so he wakes up goes to the kitchen and petra and sway are in there now these are a couple characters that again i'm not terribly familiar with and this is um why i said i would like to read x-men a Deadly Genesis. Um, I actually have X-Men Deadly Genesis. I bought it when it was originally coming out, and I'm going to say that I've read it, but I don't remember a damn thing about it, other than I know that all of these three characters here had their first appearances in that um, miniseries, as well as I believe Darwin um, first appeared there. So one of the things I might end up doing a rewind review on that. Let me know if you would like that down in the, in the comments down below. 
And so they're kind of poking fun at him, calling him emperor here, which he doesn't like to be called. Um, that might be kind of a shift, another shift in his personality. And they're making margaritas. I love me a good margarita. You know, I missed an opportunity to make myself a margarita before I started filming. Oh, well, I'll make one when I'm done. <laughs> and so they keep kind of uh, poking at him again. He's like, oh, here we go again. And they say, uh, you know what I like to say. There's always time for margaritas. And if there's not, well, I me, which is a, a jab kind of a self-deprecating humor there because she can control time and if there isn't time for margaritas well then she'll make literally make the time for for margaritas and so they're basically like are we gonna party are we gonna party and he says i'm i'm just going for a walk i can't handle you two right now and so he um walks out into uh, onto the moon and i really appreciate the um the kind of previously on here that they give us, it says the Korean scroll empires have united under Emperor Hulkling to fight a common enemy, the celestial missile, a uh, Messiah Kuoi, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. And his plant like Kotati who have claimed earth's moon as their own. Huh? Who else do we know that lives on the moon? Well, it's the Summer's House. And then we get some beautiful narration here. It says, mutants live on the moon uh, in the Summer House, far from the Sea of Tranquility, nestled in the shadows of the Meridian Fissure. It's just one lunar mile from the blue area of the moon and the ruins of the ancient... Uh, ancient alien civilization once it was the place of nightmares for mutants but that has since been put to rest the pain of that memory erased forever and i believe that's where they fought in uh they did some stuff in the dark phoenix saga we turn the page and just again look at that art oh it's beautiful you got the earth there with africa in the background then you see the barren lunar surface and now it's got this um plant-like base from the kotati built there really really cool that's just just mm, peak beautiful right there and so vulcan starts to um investigate and he says oh of course um that's some feat of engineering i would know my eyes are capable of seeing great things uh, i am however not gifted with telescopic vision and god knows i know i um i'm not known for accurately jumping uh judging the trajectory of things so i'm going to assume that earth is your general target and then you're, you're doing your best not to hit the island my people call home because that would be a mistake um you're gonna want to steer clear of Krakow. so he's like um you got some you got some shiny toys here you're not thinking of attacking my home are you just like earth in general not not my neighborhood specifically you're gonna steer clear of that right and he um he keeps talking to him and he says uh all this violence you're doing it never ends well believe me uh i know i understand where it comes from you look at humanity and you, you find them wanting uh you look at what they're capable of and they're so little good to balance out all that evil i can see why you want to destroy them i really really can't but once you start down that road have you considered what that makes you just basically like hey are you sure that you want to do this and then we get this great scene right here petrin's way just chilling out on the moon drinking their margaritas and they're like wonder what vulcan's up to and then they see an explosion in the in the uh, in the distance they're like oh that's what he's doing and then just continue to sip on their margaritas they're like do you want to go check on that no i want to sit here and keep drinking which you know what don't run towards the explosions because that's where the explosion is <laughs> and so the the kotati take him down they actually they say here we subdued him at great cost this one fights like a wounded beast um and he said the, the leader here which looks very groot like says um let them all let them fight all they want let them build their buildings and mine the earth the jungle always returns and the flesh is always weak and then they reach out and touch his uh, put some stuff into his face and they're like huh let's see what's going on here and then we go back to that flashback or i guess they're looking at it um as a memory to him to these creatures here and they say um there it is done and he's like what'd you do to me and they say basically they adjust his personality they say uh there was a there was a flaw in you an error in your existence a crack in your firmament it cannot be fixed you cannot be fixed so we've made you into something else you have good in you some small microscopic measure that given fertile soil could grow and give um and 
grow into something more, and that's unacceptable for the work we have set in front of you. So we've separated the two. Inside, hidden under a thin layer of that, of that good, is the beautiful, broken creature you are. We're going to release you back into your universe. There they will see, uh, see you changed, reborn, healthy and whole, but that is just a shell underneath it. Buried alive in a shallow grave is the real you. So, these creatures, whoever they are, come across Vulcan in the fault, just floating around, not knowing how to get out, just kind of being there, right? And they find him and they say, huh, you were like a being of perfect evil, except you've got this little bit, this little bit of good in you, but... I think we can use that. So they take that good and kind of, you know, like spread it around and make that like the make it like the sheep's clothing that the wolf uses, right? And then say, ha, we've made it appear that you are good, that you have changed, but we know you have that bedrock of evil in you, and we're gonna send you back out to the real world. We're going to rescue you, we're gonna send you home for our purposes later. Presumably very, very bad purposes. So that kind of explains the personality shift in Vulcan, which again I'm not terribly familiar with this kind of something I, I saw that them uh, some people writing about poking a uh, poking at it um, on the internet so very very interesting um, how this character has has changed and they continue on here they say you can lie to us pretend to be better uh, to be unbroken but we know what's waiting inside you waiting to get out and then we see him um, just lose it just lose it here on the moon blowing up that um, Kotati base just ravaging through them the leader here says he's mad he's lost in mind he's going to kill us all he says you wanted the you wanted the truth well this is the hard truth you're gonna die here today and then the plants guys say this is but a season a, a, a passing uh, from one to the next we will take seed we will return one day and then he finishes this finishes them off and then behind him a Petra and Sway um, show up and he kind of snaps out of it they're like uh what's going on there man um get the, kind of get the glare off that page sorry about that and they say, it's over, it's over, and then he kind of remembers this um, in his head. He says, I could break this moon in half if I wanted to. I, I, I don't want to be this way. So maybe that goodness is is taking root. And then um, Petra and Sway again kind of offer him up a, uh, a drink there. And so uh, one of the plot lines I forgot to mention is that the rest of the Summers family had gone off on vacation. And we see them here kind of reminiscent of the good old 90s Marvel swimsuit editions, which were a thing that that exists i'm sure either you have seen them or if you haven't please go google them they are <laughs> they're a thing that exists um i do like this line uh this little note from from cyclops to gabriel it says gabriel um while you were asleep uh, or you were asleep i didn't want to wake you uh gene and i are taking the kids to chandelier for the day i wanted to uh i know i've talked to you about getting out of the house and not just staying inside all day and i really think you should um, reconsider it uh, i know um I know coming back here to the Shi'ar space was out of the question, maybe it shouldn't be, but um, doing the same thing over and over each and every day makes it hard to become someone new. I know that deep down, uh, I know deep down that's what you want. And hey, I promise um, I'll be with you the whole way, come free, or come come fire, come war, come anything that would stand in the way. You're safe because you're with family. We'll be home, at, we'll probably be home after dinner. So this kind of leads into um, Scott is saying um, here, that's like, I know you want to be a different person, and that's what we just saw from, from Vulcan himself. It's like, I want to change. I don't want to be this person that can just break the moon in half and not care about it, right? So hopefully this kind of continues a good path for for the character of Vulcan in this this kind of layer of good that those uh, aliens put across him takes root and he really, really starts to change. So really good issue kind of diving into um, Vulcan here. Really cool stuff. And then we kind of get a little epilogue here um, where the Kotati are saying, hey, we, we lost this base over here. Um, there were no survivor, there were no survivors. Only one person made it back to us and he um, he died, but he only said one word over and over again, Krakoa. So now the Kotati know who blew up their base. It was indeed the mutants. And so we might have some tie-ins there that maybe these Kotati, a plant-based species come and attack Krakoa, which is a sentient island, which is, you know, sentient plants and things like that. So we're kind of collecting a bunch of little different things that could spell doom for Krakoa, and this is one of them. 
Um, also, I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but speaking about um, the tie-ins to um, Empire, I did pick up the Empire X-Men number one of the miniseries, but I haven't had a chance to read that yet. I'll have a review of it up probably over this weekend, so you guys can check that out after I post it. So guys, what did you think of uh, the... Empire, uh, I'm sorry, of X-Men issue 10, the tie-in to the Empire event. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. If it's your first time here at the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button for me. It would mean a lot. And until next time, we'll see you at the comic shop.